I am so blessed. I've been asked to film the Tanaha Nation activities today. So Wayne is going to show me around and show us what the First Nations did many, many years ago. Their heritage, their history. It's going to be great. So you made these, Wayne? I made these, yes. Wow. This is a authentic excursion old canoe. All <laughs> done with roots and bark. Wow. No nails, no screws. Okay, Rich, you want to grab that one? No nails, no screws. Here's the here's the bitter cherry bark you tie up everything with. What is that? Bitter cherry bark, nipsumku. That's what that is. Wow. And then uh, um, this is maple. These ribs are maple. These slats are cedar, covered in canvas. So uh, in the old days, it was uh, white pine, white pine bark. When Europeans came. We uh, went to canvas, just like our teepees. We had uh, uh, tule mat teepees. Then when Europeans came, we went to canvas too. When Europeans came, it changed our life forever. For good or bad? <laughs> Depends on, uh, well, I can speak English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch my grandfather and my grandma do all this. Don't fall, Richie, you're on video. The Kootenai, also known as the Tanaha, are an indigenous people of Canada and the United States. The Kootenai bands live in southeastern British Columbia, northern Idaho, and western Montana. The Kootenai language is a language isolate, unrelated to the languages of the neighboring peoples. The Lower Kootenai Band is headquartered in Creston on the most populous reserve, Creston No. 1 along the Kootenai River, which is 6 kilometers north of the U.S.-Canada border and is my hometown. We had a good day today. We got a beaver in a trap and uh, got a nice buck for camp. Wanna come back and crack this guy? <laughs> Pretty heavy. <laughs> what are you going to do with that muskrat? I'm going to uh, eat them later on like we did. <laughs> and then I'm going to skin them out and, and put them on a frame just to show the other uh, First Nations on uh, how to do it. Okay, neat. And it's, uh, it'll be on history forever. Right. And then in the Tanaka we had a duck chief. Ducks were one of our staple food before the Europeans came. Okay. So then I'm going to have Richard uh, pluck this duck and skin this while, uh, you know, while we, uh, we take shots. Okay. So we... Something like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I learned all this growing up from the elders. Now, I am an elder. 
And so are you passing it on to... That's why we're trying to get it recorded now. Right on. Because in a couple of years, I won't, you know, 10 years, who knows? I won't, might not be around. And I don't know who else is going to be doing this, but I got to have the dullest knife in the world. <laughs> in the old days, I remember going to all the houses and everybody had muskrats hanging up. Everybody. How do you catch them? We cooked them in the oven. Catch them in uh, traps. Traps? Yeah. Traps. I shot that one. Yeah, I got oh, okay. it. With a boom. Wow. <laughs> so, this is how you do a muskrat. And thank you, Lee Amford. Doing this for us? Oh, sure. <laughs> and it's fun for me. Yeah, different, eh? <laughs> and not too long ago, there was a whole flock of geese that flew in, but mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to them. I remember watching my grandma doing this back in the 50s and 60s. So that makes me an elder today. <laughs> my grandma, Mary and Ernest. That's her uh, Christian name. Her Indian name was Ditti. So uh, her Catholic name was Mary and Ernest. Wow. She's the one that taught me this. She passed away in the 60s. She couldn't speak English, it's Tanaka. So. Was she born and raised here? Yeah, she was born and raised here and then she lived in Arrow Lakes for a while. Oh, yeah. And then she came back. And her, and her husband was uh, oh, yeah, was Louis Ernest. That was his Christian name, Catholic name. And uh, he was the last blanket medicine man of the Lower Kootenays. And he passed away in the, in the 60s, early 60s. When I was a young, young boy. And everything I'm doing from canoes to trapping to hunting to high canning, I learned from the elders. So that is true what they say. You learn from the elders. That's for sure. Yes. So this is how you skin a muskrat out. Now most of the el all the elders are gone now. It's a new generation. I'm a bi I'm a, probably the last one of the last of the baby boomers. Oh. And then we got uh, seven generation people coming up and after that millennia so hopefully with all this recording stuff we'll carry on the culture so it doesn't die it doesn't become extinct lots of stuff's going to become extinct like our language is going to become extinct one day so it's very important we record all this do you speak the language yeah i speak not fluently, but I speak Tanaka. Wow. Okay, this is your muskrat right here. And this is the hide. And I got a stretcher somewhere. I gotta go find it. So that's it. And this is how you made your money. This is how you made your money. You sold your hides. You sold your hides. Hudson Bay and that's how the people made their money. So this provided clothing for you, it provided uh, money for you so you can purchase your flour and etc. Wow. And then this is uh, for food. This is for your food and this was um, one of the main staple foods for the Tunaha, especially for Lower Kootenai. Because down here, before all this land became reclaimed and all the dams were put in, it used to be one big marsh. Oh, wow. And there was millions of muskrats in the old days, right from Kootenai Lake, right to Bonner's Ferry. Huh. Then the dams got put in and all the land got reclaimed. Now it's all gone. So we're trying to keep the culture alive. Uh, this is nice, nice hides. It takes about 50 of these to make a jacket. I was going to ask what <laughs> Yeah. 
Nice. Do you know how to sew them? And well, what they do is, is they cut the back off this. Yeah. They just, not this front part, the back part. Mm -hmm. And then they sew all these together. Yep. 50 to make a jacket. Okay. They do the same thing with mink, weasel, lynx, mm -hmm. all that, that's what you use. So that's just a little bit of culture, so much culture to talk about. It took me a lifetime to learn what I, what I know. And then my friend here, Joel, he's plucking a duck, a mallard. And again, I always say in the old days, there was millions of ducks before all this marshland became farmland. And uh, ducks were another staple food for the Tunaka, especially for my band, the Lower Kootenays. And uh, we used to have a duck chief in our society. We got a duck chief, we got a deer chief, and we got a fish chief. And um, in the old days, all the houses, we had hunters, we had canoes, we had sweat lodges, we had trappers, we had hunters, and, and now it's all, we're starting to lose all that. So just a little bit of uh, history about ducks. And again, like I said, there's millions and millions of ducks. Wow. And it's well recorded, well documented in some of the uh, Europeans' history, settlers when they moved in here, back at the turn of the century. Yeah. So, wow. The ducks were meant more to us than geese. They mean more to me than geese. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I prefer a duck over a goose any day. That's right. Or three ducks over a goose. <laughs> Then, after he plucks that, I'll show you how we burn the pin feathers off, prepared for the pot. Again, you put it over the fire, mm -hmm. and you scrape all the pin feathers off. These are all the pin feathers right here. Like this. Joel, you're doing a good job. I won't have to burn it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bit left. <laughs> I was thinking I didn't bring my torch, but uh, we guess we don't need a torch, do we? When did you catch this one? I got that... Um, Two days ago. Oh, okay. So it's still okay. Still okay. It's cold out. Yeah. And this is what a winter cap would look like back in the old days. You got your sustenance right here. You got your uh, ducks. You got your hunko. That means uh, uh, muskrat. And just behind me, you got a sinna, beaver. We'll get into that later on. Get into the good stuff of the sturgeon on his canoes. That's a we are a poon yaksuma. That's the sturgeon on his canoes. So we'll do a little bit of that. Okay. Yeah, the, the sturgeon on his canoes, the we are a poon yaksuma were our cars. We didn't have no cars in the old days. The river's behind us. That's where our highways, the Kukuti River was our highways. We traveled the rivers, the lakes, and our sturgeon on his canoes. So uh, the, the canoes were our vehicles. That's where we traveled to meet uh, other band members throughout our territory. We traveled from uh, all along the river, from Kuti Lake, all the way to Arrow Lakes, all the way to Cranbrook, all the way to Montana, Idaho. It was all in the Sturgeon Nose canoes. Once you get all the feathers plucked off, this is how we used to burn the rest off. Watch my mom and my grandma do this all the time when I was a young boy. But we didn't have a fire this big though. <laughs> and then we had a knife. Where's my knife? I got my knife there. And then we just went around and It's a little hot, but too hot. Ah.
the Tanaha people are known as a peaceful nation. So I thought how perfect to end this movie by standing by their church. So until my next epic adventure, assalamu alaikum, shalom, peace.